Hello, if you're new. Um, I'll be talking about Mata. I announced it yesterday. So uh, in front of me, I have four different matcha and four different bowls. So it's going to be very intense uh, matcha whisking. And if you watch all the end, uh, I'm going to announce a winner to get one, uh, one ounce of this matcha. Uh, if you haven't had matcha before in the past, uh, you should give it a try. It's very good for like morning boost. It tastes amazing. Most people never had a real matcha in the past. So, um, I mean, most people never had a, like a real matcha, like the ceremonial quality. They usually just get their matcha from like a cafe or from like Starbucks or sometimes when they buy matcha, they buy it from like grocery stores. And a lot of time they're kind of disappointed with the flavor. So hopefully today I can talk about that a little bit and also teach everybody about how to use uh, matcha properly and how to select a good uh, matcha, okay? So in front of me, I have four different matcha. I'm gonna show you a little bit the difference between the four. <coughs> so this is the kind of matcha that you probably get at the grocery store. And a lot of people didn't realize that there's a huge difference between the two. Uh, I'm gonna put the ball aside first. It's very simple. We call it the paper test. Um, so all you do is just get a white piece uh, of paper. And let me just put about About that much, okay. Can't really see it very clearly, but I'm hoping everybody can see the color. A second, yeah. Um, show you a little bit. Whew. This, I don't know if you can see it. Let's show a little bit closer. So this is the kind of matcha that you get if it's like a little bit lower quality. And the color you might not be able to tell too much, but what you can, what you can tell actually is by using your finger uh, and then just kind of rub it. And you can also smell it. So if I rub this, I don't know if you can see it, you can, your hand, you can feel it, how, how soft it is. And you can even see the color better when I do this. Okay. Uh, and by giving a try of that paper test, you can uh, you can feel the texture on how thick the texture is. Okay, so that's one way you can see that the color slightly kind of dirty, uh, dirty looking color. Gonna wash that, and then I'm gonna try our imperial matcha, which is the one on sale today on the website. So this is kind of matcha that is better than that. Hi, Mel. So this is the kind of matcha that I use for just an everyday ice matcha that is affordable. Uh, we call it the imperial matcha. Now, just keep in mind, a lot of people get confused with this word imperial. Uh, honestly, it's really 100% is branding. Uh, a lot of people kind of shock when they see it. Uh, they thought imperial or royal or anything like that is a specific grade, you know, so it's funny. Good morning, Maya. Uh, it's funny how um, people will come here. Can I get this specific imperial grade that I only get this from this specific store? Uh, but... Honestly, it really means nothing. I've, I have seen a low quality matcha and stamp the word imperial in front of it. So, so how do you know if it's good quality? Well, definitely not from the name. Because if you just rely on the name, then you'll be disappointed and you're going you're gonna to hate matcha. Um, so, 
gonna get another one here. This is our imperial matcha. Our imperial matcha is picked during summertime. Uh, so they're not the spring pick. So when you pick a matcha during summertime, the leaf is larger. They're a lot more, uh, a lot more sun. It's a lot more hot. Um, and it's a lot cheaper a lot of times. Uh, but if it's done properly, it still makes a great uh, matcha like ice drinks. <clears throat> In my opinion, this is probably the lowest quality for me for drinking it as every day as or even for cooking okay uh i'm gonna show you the difference between the two and if you can see that I'm gonna... okay i'm just gonna do the test the pepper test again and it's a lot smoother and it's you can see it from the color later when i show it to you on the screen i'm literally just pulling it down over this white piece of paper hey jocelyn so you see the difference between the two colors is huge. Uh, that's, this is the kind of matcha that you probably get at like Costco. Uh, and sometimes they put other artificial flavor uh, to make it taste like a matcha green. But, and this is imperial matcha that is on sale today. And this is like our everyday quality milk tea. This is what we use for making any, any matcha drinks. People can upgrade, but that's usually what we use. And the next one is our royal grade, which is a lot of people's favorite grade. The price is almost like more than double, but once you try it, it's very difficult for you to go back to try the imperial or even the, the grocery quality one. So I'm just gonna do this. All of them has green color, but there's a different vibrant and different contrast on uh, the different green. So when you put it on the paper like that, so same thing, I'm just doing this. Uh, same thing, just use this one. And you can already see even though from far away that the color is even better and better. Now, this is not from a famous place uh, in Japan. They're from Mie. I mean, Mie is pretty famous. They're close to Uji. But usually a famous matcha, they come from Uji. But at the same time, you're paying more because of the name. So we kind of like this one. And I don't know if you can see it on the screen. Uh, like this is a lot thicker. And you can see it's almost, uh, it's more smooth, it's more creamy. Grocery quality, imperial quality, what we use for like everyday milk tea. And then this is the royal grape. You see the difference, it's, it's very, very obvious. And one more actually. Recently, I just got a new matcha. Now this one is actually from Uji. So it's the, a lot of time when people looking for a matcha the first thing that they look for is the word Uji. And a lot of people, they don't even know what is Uji even means. They just thought matcha must come from Uji in order to get the best quality. And I mean, Mel, you Japanese, so you know that, I don't know if you've been to Uji, but I haven't. But there's a lot of Uji matcha that's terrible, I promise you. Uh, I have tried Uji matcha that is disappointing. So sometimes it's tricky when you're getting a tea from like a famous place. Same thing with oolong, same thing with black tea, same thing with all the other tea. Whenever it's like a, a famous place for where it's from, I'm a lot more reluctant sometimes because am I paying for just the price or am I paying for the actual quality, right? So this is a new Uji Maga that I just got. I only, only have very few on the website. Um, yeah. I can't wait to go there once the pandemic closed. I mean, open. <laughs> I mean, sorry. No, when the pandemic is over, can't even talk properly. I haven't had my matcha, that's why. I always have my matcha every morning because it makes me feel a lot more uh, uh, energized, just like coffee is. But I don't feel the jittery, even 
uh, and it feels really great. Like if you don't drink matcha in the morning, it's it's it just feels different. You feel tired. Okay, so same thing. These both are good quality. Just one from Mie, one one and one from Uji. The the three matcha is all on sale. And I haven't created the coupon uh, yet, but today's coupon just put the word matcha. I'll turn it on after the after the uh, life. Uh, then you can save an extra five percent. Okay, and so this is the one from Uji, and it actually feels smoother than the Royal, but they're very close to each other. I don't know if you can see it. But once it once it goes over the good quality, I feel like the color is no longer the most important by then. By then, then you're no longer looking at color anymore. You know you want to pass that quality after that imperial that I just show you. Like anything after this, is it's no longer about the color, but it's about the texture, the flavor. The, the tea master, you can't really see it. Here, see the difference in color? Can you see it now? I'm showing off on YouTube and Facebook too. So can you see the different color? So the, the two, I'm just gonna make a mess. The two over here, they are both ceremonial grade. This is the Imperial Mata. So this one is probably the minimum that you wanna do for your daily Daily matcha, anything after this, they are all good matcha. And, and now we're gonna be a lot more nitpicking on what we're looking for. Uh, we're gonna be a lot more picky. Are we looking for umami? Are we looking for the texture? Are we looking for the complexity? Are we looking for how, how, how easy it is to wish them? You know, so you can't just judge by the color by then, okay? Uh, and this color also it changes uh, when if you get this like when it's fresh pick in around, uh, when they just fresh pick in during the spring they're usually ready to grind I think they're ready around uh, August or September because they have to rest the leaf every place different but a lot of the good matcha that I've tried they pick it and they don't they don't grind it right away they let it rest for a few months before they grind it so this different farm, different technique. Uh, sometimes, uh, if you heard the word single cultivar, that seems to be popular lately, which means because there's different, different cultivar of this, uh, this tea leaf, which is what we call it tencha. Uh, tencha is the leaf that they use for grinding, uh, not just any green tea. Um, so they tend to love to stem that word single cultivar uh, Uji matcha or single kati for samidori or things like that. Uh, but a lot of times, it's not necessarily the best quality. Again, you know, those are just the terms that, that you know that it comes from a single place. And, and it really depends on the farm and it depends on the year too. I have tried a matcha that I love in the past and then the next year I try the same thing and it's completely different, uh, different texture, different flavor. So you kind of have to revisit that. And one of my favorite actually, when the, when the master actually blend certain different royal and the ceremonial quality mata and they blend them together to achieve the, the perfect flavor in a way. Because uh, Uji matcha, for example, they tend to be a little bit more umami. And the Mie matcha that we have, it's, it has umaminess, but it's slightly nutty. Uh, there you go, Mel is a Mel is a definitely an expert in matcha. She's a big fan of matcha, so thank you, Mel, for uh, supporting the information that I'm <laughs> providing. Uh, but um, yeah, we, me and Mel, actually been doing matcha testing at the shop like so many times, different location. She's nice enough to bring matcha when, when she visits Japan. 
uh, and it's nice enough to share with everybody all of our uh, all of the tea lover in the community, and we are like all geeky and sitting down together, and like I'm like I don't know, I like this expensive one, like you know, we all like debating uh, what matcha is the best because once it goes above that level, it's it's now it's a discussion, all right? Who is I mean, which matcha is the best matcha, you know? And that's that's but important. It's for a lot of people that know, understand that to never get this kind of matcha. That is a big no, no. You know, no matter how cheap it is, don't drink that. This is like the minimum you're going to drink for every day. After that, there will be like, a, you can call it a connoisseur kind of quality. And then you're going to debate it on which one is better. And I'm going to show you how different it is when I try to wish this matcha in compared to this WhatsApp today. So today, today's session is actually going to be a little bit longer than normal because there's a lot for me to do. Um, <laughs> and I actually never teach matcha class in the shop. Usually we have Re uh, by T. Curious. She usually the one that teaches the class. Uh, so this is actually seriously my first time teaching about matcha. Okay, so there are multiple different bowls. Just showing you off a little bit on the different style. And if you notice, there's one unique thing about this bowl is they are all have unique pattern, unique shape, and some of them has a flat bottom. Some of them has like a really kind of flat plus curvy on the side. Some of them is just curvy, but with a tall, with a tall wall. All of them has a tall wall. Then I think the side is very important because when you're whisking it, if you just use a normal rice bowl, they tend to get too low. And then when you try to whisk it, you get a risking of making a mess. Okay. Um, first one I'm going to do, I'm just going to try to whisk the matcha of the of this organic Japanese matcha. See, I love how they just stem the word Japanese on every single green tea and doesn't even care about whether people gonna think it's good quality or not. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen when I try to whisk this matcha. Actually, I'm gonna get another bowl just because I don't wanna make, I don't wanna make this bowl dirty. I'll be right back in 30 seconds. All right, I'm getting another ball. I even bring a scale this time. Yes. I make matcha like every day, <laughs> like sometimes 10 times a day. So I always just kind of eyeball it and just rely on this scoop. Uh, but I want to kind of do it properly. Okay. Let's see. Let's see how many grams. Because usually you want to put about two grams. But again, I always eyeball it. Right, let's see. This is not the matcha that you want, but sometimes in order for you to appreciate the good one, you want to kind of drink the bad one. Okay, for some reason, my scale is not working. Okay, that's about 2.5 grams. This is way too much, but oh well. I'm not going to be drinking it anyway. Okay, so let's see. Actually, I'm going to do it side by side together just because I don't want to make my whisk dirty with that matcha. <laughs> and I already have a cup of ice ready with cream. There will be my, mor my, my morning ice matcha. I'm also going to be drinking normal matcha. Uh, normally, you want to kind of moisten it up, the bamboo thing. Uh, I'm so not prepared today, but I'm supposed to moisten this, but I'm just going to moisten it with 
hot water. <laughs> See, that's what happened when I haven't had my matcha. I'm not prepared. Okay. I'm going to just get rid of that water. Okay. All right. I'm going to put the imperial quality first. There are multiple ways of doing this. So Mel just say in Japan you ask for matcha, there are two styles. Yep, yep, there's a thinner and then there's intense one. So that's a lot of matcha. <laughs> this is 2.5 gram. Yes, there are two styles. Actually, I was going to talk about that a little bit too. So same thing, I'm going to do about 2.5 grams on this. Usually just about two, uh, two grams. So one grams, and you can sift it with a strainer if you want to. Uh, I have seen both ways. Uh, the debate is sometimes they hate that metal can change the color, uh, the flavor of the matcha. But at the same time, if you sift them, uh, you get a lot finer matcha. And when you whisk it, it's easier. And when you drink it, you don't have to worry about some sort of clumps. So it's optional. I'm not going to use that for now. In my video that I created on YouTube, I don't, I don't use the sifter. But at the shop, when I'm making it for everybody, I always use the sifter because I'm serving to uh, customers. And I don't want my customer to think that our matcha is bad quality just because it has clumps. Having clumps is normal. So if you don't like that clumps, use a sifter. I have a big 32 ounce, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be all wired today. So so far, 1.8 grams, usually just two grams, but I'm trying to match this with this. Two point three grams. That's a lot of matcha. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm actually gonna get a separate whisk too. I'm sorry. I'm no assistant today, so. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna use my beat up mat matcha whisk for the beat up matcha quality and the good matcha whisk for the better quality. <laughs> that sounds fair, right? Uh, over time, uh, this thing is gonna open up like that. So, so you'll eventually have to replace it. All right, 175 degree is the water I'm gonna use. I'm gonna try to whisk this low quality first. So, if you like it, the thick style that Mel just mentioned, you you just kind of mix it slowly. I put a little bit too much water for that, and it should be thicker. Really, really have a bite, and it's almost like a a thicker version of like espresso, you know. Uh, most people cannot stand that. Um, so I, we don't serve that here at the shop, but at some matcha bar, they do serve that thick style and they, they usually complement it with something very sweet to, uh, to balance that strong flavor so that you don't, you don't get uh, too, sometimes it can, it can be seen bitter, but it's not bitter. It's, it's more like the umami is just, just a little bit overwhelmed and it has that bite. So, so I'm just whisking, uh, whisking it slowly. I want to show you. So I'm not trying, look how dirty it looks. I'm not trying to make it creamy yet. Okay, same thing with this. So the first step is always trying to just properly um, blend them together. I don't know if you can see them. All right. Make sure that something on the side, you want to get some of those. Okay. 
So I'll show you before I even whisk it how different it is. Can I? Can you see it? All right. I'm gonna show. Oh, this. Like this is same 2.5 gram. It's about the same of amount of water, but you can already tell that I can't even show you the matcha because of it just, I don't know. It just feels thinner and the color is disgusting. And the smell is like almost like a sewer kind of smell. It's kind of fishy where this one is almost nutty. And this is not even our highest quality, by the way. This is just our Imperial, which is the summer pick. Okay. So now we're going to whisk it faster. And so after you blend it really well, that's when you add just a little bit more water. The water temperature is 175. Not too hot, not too low. If you try to do too hot, it's going to make your tea taste bitter. But it's going to make it easier to make it creamier. So... But if you do too low, it won't make it bitter, but then your matcha will not get creamy. Wow, surprisingly, it's still pretty creamy. <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised. Um, I don't know if you, everybody can see it. This is, you know what? I'm going to transfer it to here so you can see it better. There you go. That's what I'm going to do. Honestly, I'm, <laughs> I don't even want to drink it. It seriously smells kind of, it's going to poison me. All right. And then I'm going to show you how it looks like on our imperial one, which is our standard quality to make a milk tea. Oh, I haven't, sorry, I haven't whisked it yet. All right, I'm going to do that. So after I blend it really well, I put just a little bit more water, two, two steps. So if you're wondering, why don't I do this right away? Why don't I whisk it right away? Because what happened is if you try to whisk it right away without really blending it really well, then there's still a lot of like clumps. And then when you try to whisk it, it won't be creamy. Oh, wow. Way more creamier. Like it's kind of white if you look at the screen. You see that? I want to transfer it to this just to show you. Even that, you can see the whisk. It's like white and creamy. And then, so usually there's still foam in the, in the bowl. You can see that where even the foam looks different. You can see the bubble is a lot larger. I used exactly the same technique. So I'm going to show you close, close up how how the, the foam looks different, okay? The color is incredible. The color is incredible. Again, this is not even our highest quality. And the smell, uh, like I said, it's like, maybe like a little bit better than the sewer smell. <laughs> it's definitely a sewer kind of smell. Uh, very sour, uh, kind of fishy, earthy, and I'm not sure if I want to try it, but I'm just going to try it from here. It's just kind of dumb to do this. Yeah. This is like, oh my God. Hmm. Oh, no wonder people hate this. I forgot how bad is this matcha is. Woo. It's very sharp kind of sour note and it linger and it doesn't goes away i need my jasmine iced tea to rinse it oh my god i don't know how people can can buy that you gotta have to put a lot of sugar like a lot of sugar all right i'm just gonna drink it this one Ooh. and it stays it's horrible All right, now this one is definitely has a bitterness, but it doesn't have that sour, fishy kind of earthiness. And that's normal for that to be bitter because this is a summer pick too. So that's why this is the perfect one for me if I want to make a milk tea because once you put cream, it's just amazing. So I'm going to put the rest of it to here. I will like 
is way, way better. And you can see from the color too. And I like to kind of put more water here. So always try to make a thick version, not like super thick, like the Koi style, the Kosui style, uh, but then just enough for you to be able to put cream. And just put your favorite cream. Mata is great. You can just put any, really any kind of cream and it tastes amazing. You can put almond milk, you can put soy milk, and you can put oat milk. Everything I've tried is amazing. Half and half is also very amazing. Like this, this is the drink that I drink every day. Um, and sometimes I use the, the ceremonial quality, but the ceremonial, the, the ceremonial quality, which is our royal matcha, uh, they, they are good without, uh, without milk. Sometimes if I want that bite, I actually prefer the imperial uh, quality because a lot of that ceremonial quality, they tend very, very, uh, very, very smooth. And sometimes it's actually a little bit lacking uh, flavor when you try to mix it with milk. But it depends. Like I said, anything after this quality, it, they're all different. Like Mel just mentioned, every ceremonial matcha tastes different. We try like at least 15 matcha. And they're all ceremonial matcha and they all taste different. So if you're just looking for health benefits, a good ceremonial matcha should be okay. But if you're looking for that special flavor, you got to keep trying uh, to find it, you know. So the next one I'm going to use is this more curvy bowl. So the flat one is easier because when you try to whisk, they don't, you know, you get, you get everything on the bottom of the, on the bowl, right? When the, the rounded one, uh, you, don't, you don't have that many wiggling room. But as long as you put the proper amount of matcha and water uh, and the right temperature, you really don't need to work very, very hard. You know, because I have seen people work very hard they, until their their muscles really, <laughs> really tired and they still not able to make it foamy. So usually either the matcha has problem, but most of the time it's not because of the matcha. Most of the time it's the technique that you're doing is wrong. So a lot of time they do it too much. They do it too much to the point that the water temperature drop to like almost room temperature, you, it's a lot harder to make it uh, foamy when your water temperature drop, okay? So you don't wanna wait too long, uh, you don't wanna whisk it too long, and, and also you don't wanna put too much water. That's the number one mistake a lot of people uh, did is they put too much water, okay? Or sometimes, they put the right amount of water, but they don't blend it first. The first step that I just put a little tiny water just to blend them together, sometimes they don't even do that. So that's a problem. I'm gonna do, you know what? I'm gonna do my new matcha because I already drink this matcha all the time. This is from the Mie. This is the Royal Crate, which is still on sale. This is actually my new Uji matcha. Okay, so slightly different with our Mie Matcha. They are both ceremonial quality. And I'm not going to use a strainer again. I personally, when I'm drinking it for myself, I don't use a strainer. And I, when I'm making it for customer, I use a strainer. Because I don't mind, personally, I don't mind little tiny clumps. Okay, hold on, let me measure this. And I don't normally measure this either. I just eyeball it. But for education purposes, let's measure this. All right, that's one gram. One gram is perfect if I'm just drinking it up as a bowl. You don't need to transfer it to an iced tea. If you want to make like an iced tea, you're going to need two grams. This is what I drink every morning. This is my power boost. <laughs> This is what I believe to keep me from getting sick because sometimes I drink two of this a day. Okay, but if I'm drinking it straight, hot, one gram is plenty. So that's about one gram I'm gonna show you, okay? So everybody, all right, so same thing. 
I don't I don't need to sift them. You you can, but it's optional. I have seen both way. I, I remember though. I mean, it's funny sometimes when you meet uh, not male, but sometimes when I met like Japanese when I use the strainer, they actually got mad at me. Like, why are you using strainer? <laughs> you know, that's not traditional. But at the same time, I have seen Japanese people that use strainer too. So you tell me which one is correct. So I don't know. Uh, and then I'm just putting a little bit of water. Very important. This first step is very important. If you don't do this first step, it's going to make it harder for you to try to make it uh, creamier. Okay, I gotta rinse this a little bit. Okay. So I'm just gonna blend it really slowly, massage, kind of slowly blend it, making it almost the thick style, the one that Mel mentioned earlier. And you can see how the clumps is. You can't really see it from the monitor, but your goal is to break down most of the clumps. So if you hate that clumps, then you need to sift them. I don't mind those clumps, so I just leave it there. It doesn't bother me. But if it bother you, then use a sifter, okay? So it doesn't bother me at all. I'm just gonna put a little bit more water and then I don't wait too long. As soon as that second time I put that water, you gotta start whisking. You gotta start whisking. If you don't do that, the water temperature is gonna cool down and it's almost impossible for you to try to make it creamy. Now, you can see, as long as you do it right away, your goal is to make sure that there is no big bubbles, okay? There's no big bubble, so your goal, you can't really see it. I'm gonna get another one. So rinse this, I'm gonna show you how creamy it is if you do it properly. Still cannot see it, huh? But the color is a lot more vibrant. So this is what I will drink uh, by itself. If I don't want, if I don't want to finish a whole cup, like a 12 ounce of water, I'm just putting it back because I just want to show you. If I don't want to drink like a 12 ounce, you just need like that four ounce, two ounces shot just to get that, that benefits, that caffeine and stuff like that. Obviously I'm not supposed to do that. Okay. Don't do that. I just try to show you the color. Usually after you wish them, and it's ready to go. So if I try to whisk them again after I transfer like that, it will not become foamy. It will not become foamy. So that's why if you wait too long, it's a lot harder. No matter how fast you're gonna do it, it might look foamy for like a second, but then immediately it's gonna be, you're gonna lose all that foaminess. I don't know if you can tell, I also add a little bit more water, but you can see the, the bubble is actually starting to uh, they not really hold each other too much. So, so it's important and I can already see half of the other side is no longer foamy. So when you transfer back and forth, if you wait too long, if you put too much water, all of those is a possible reason why your matcha is not creamy. You know, so it's not, most of the time, it's really the technique that you're using is wrong. And it's okay. A lot of I have seen I have seen people that mix matcha like all the time and they're still not making it for me. Hey, as long as it still tastes good, you know, it's fine. That foaminess though, it does create a nice kind of creamy texture and that that bubbles for some reason, it makes it feel like it's a little bit sweeter. I wanna try this new Uji matcha. Uh, ceremonial grade also. It's on the website, brand new. And I actually tried like a week ago, so I'm gonna try it for the second time. So if you're drinking it uh, like this kind of style, you can drink it just from the bowl, okay? It's amazing. You know, I almost feel like it has that umaminess and there's a, there's a little bit more bitterness too. So I feel like this is like in the middle between our royal matcha and our imperial matcha. Even though they both are shameful quality, just different place. 
Um, so I have a feeling this makes a great uh, milk tea as well. But personally, I still prefer the the royal matcha that we've been selling for a while. But um, but this is like still really really good. So if you're like interested to see how the different ceremonial quality matcha uh, difference as far as like flavor, it's a good timing for you to give it a try because uh, because. Um, we don't always have different quality and I wasn't even doing it properly. I can see here from the site, like I was not paying attention, but there's a site here that's matcha. That's, you don't want that to happen, right? So make sure when you, when you blend it the very first time, you don't want to let that happen. I think I'm just talking and doing, it's not doing me any favor. <laughs> um, but a lot of time matcha is very personal. Uh, I don't like sharing my bowl. Uh, with other people a lot of time if I have like my personal matcha ball and that's why it's very important for you to pick the design that you like you know because it shows your personality it shows what kind of uh, what kind of character you are so you can get like a generic ball but obviously you know if you drink it every day I think it's worth it to invest into uh, a matcha ball and Mel I believe you have multiple matcha ball from here too and you know so it's <laughs> Some, some of these ball, they can go like $200, $300, you know. We don't carry those kind of crazy expensive matcha ball. Those are usually like made by some master pottery from Japan. So at the moment, uh, we're not carrying that yet. Maybe in the future, but right now we just carry a standard regular matcha ball. Uh, they are from Japan and they are like half handmade, but they're not like one of a kind. They just have slightly different pattern, but they always have the same similar Kind of style but um but after that yeah you want to finish it right away especially when it's like hot like this you don't want to like let it sit uh and then drink it like 40 minutes later i prefer to finish it within like five ten minutes that's when i feel like i get the best flavor and i get the best uh benefits too if i wait you can you can literally see how how the color changed within 30 minutes that's how fast it is, unless if it's ice. If it's ice, it takes a little bit longer for them uh, for it to change the color. But when it's hot like this, you want to finish it right away. You make it, you finish it, you drink it. Just like that, like one shot. Um, and you don't need any sugar, you don't need any milk, you don't need any, cream, uh, any added uh, uh, cream. You can just drink it right away. Uh, when it's like uh, a good ceremonial matcha when you drink it hot. But I have another one here. So this one I'll take my time. You can even put a little bit sweetener. Uh, you know, I don't I don't against it. Sometimes I do that. But yeah, no, so that's pretty much. I hope I cover a lot of the basics on, on this matcha grading and how to whisk the matcha. But if you have any questions, you know, you can DM me. And just use the word matcha for 5% for all of the things on the website. And the matcha sets, I'm going to fix the price. I just noticed that the price was not right because the price is supposed to be $72. So if you haven't had the matcha and you want to start getting into matcha, we have a whole set that comes with everything. The bowl, the whisk, the stand, uh, the scoop. Uh, it's on the website. It should be $72, but I'm going to fix that price soon. And then use the word matcha for an extra five percent off for today okay but thank you again for tuning in and thank you mel for uh providing that extra information while uh, while i was talking but i'm hoping that everybody kind of learned something from today and there's still a lot of tea that is on sale on the website and, uh, and i'm gonna be back around maybe one o'clock to talk some of the tea that is on sale today. And actually there's some other tea that I didn't really talk about yesterday too. So, and I also got two big boxes of tea wares. So I might do another unboxing. That's always fun. But um, thank you again for watching. I'll, I'll see you again later around one o'clock or tomorrow for sure at 11 o'clock. Bye guys.